Hello viewers. Today I shall explain to you about the matter waves associated with moving particles. This was suggested by Louis de Broglie and he received Nobel Prize for th this concept in the year 1929. The outlines of my talk would be that I will be touching upon nature loves symmetry and I will explain universe in terms of matter and radiation. We will discuss about wave nature, particle nature and dual nature of waves. Then I will introduce you de Broglie matter waves and various expressions for de Broglie wavelength. We will solve some simple problems based on this concept matter waves. Objective of today's talk is you will be learning about matter waves and derive various expressions for de Broglie wavelength. The learning outcome would be that you will be able to relate dual nature of light with particles, explain matter waves, you will be able to discuss properties of matter waves, derive various expressions for de Broglie wavelength and solve some simple problems. Nature loves symmetry. Let us consider some examples. If you take up this sunflower and count the number of seeds and the petals on both sides of this line, it will be exactly the same. Same way, both sides of peacock would be symmetric about this line. This flower, three petals this side, three petals this side, is symmetrical about line. And same way, this flower also. Look at this leaf. You count the number of waves this side and on this side. It will be exactly the same. Look at this type of leaves. You can see the number of leaves on both sides of this, this particular combination will be same on both sides. The, both sides of insect will be symmetric about this line. Same way, the features of the person on both sides of this line will be symmetric. So we conclude, nature loves symmetry. Now let us imagine the universe. What it is made up of? Whatever you see under the sun in the universe, it can be categorized into two. One is matter, like hills, valleys, clouds, trees, buildings, ship, ocean, whatever it may be. Everything is made up of matter. Rocky material makes the hill. Leaves, building made up of bricks, ship made up of material, the ocean, the liquid, water made up of molecules. So whatever you see in the universe in one form is in the form of matter. The other form is radiation. Entire universe can be existing in two forms. One is matter, another one is radiation. The sun, the stars, the light from the fluorescent lamp or the tube light or radiations only. So entire universe can be packed into two forms. One is matter, one is radiation. Now, universe is made up of matter, matter is made up of particles. The other form is light. Light is in the form of waves. Now let us consider, light has so many properties. It has frequency, it has wavelength. If we know frequency and wavelength, we can determine the wave velocity of the light wave. What is the phase between the light waves? What is the amplitude of the light wave? What is the intensity of the light wave? So many properties decide what is light. Now, light has dual nature. Light has particle nature. Light has wave nature. The wave nature is based on wave theory. Phenomena like refraction, interference, diffraction, 
polarization all prove that radiation is moving in the form of waves now two other phenomena like photoelectric effect and compton effect is based on planck's quantum theory planck's quantum theory states that radiation is made up of many quantas the minimum energy of each quanta is given by h nu that means light radiation is in terms of photons photon is the smallest particle whose energy is h nu so based on this concept of planck's quantum theory photoelectric effect compton effect they are all proved thus these two effects reveal that light is particle in nature and these phenomena prove that light is having wave nature the truth is that light has dual nature light radiation is both particle nature and wave nature now let us come to the matter which makes the universe matter is made up of particles examples for particles electrons protons neutrons and these electrons neutrons protons can imagine to be made up of quarks and gluons now how we define many properties for the light radiation let us say the properties for the particles if it is a particle it can be located at certain points in the space the particle should have mass the particle should have some velocity if it is at rest velocity becomes zero if it is moving it will have certain velocity if it is moving the particle will have momentum a moving particle will have energy so particle means it can be located you can measure its mass velocity momentum and energy so de broglie great reflection over the universe he realized universe is made up of matter and radiation and he also reflected when light has dual nature why not material particle also have dual nature because nature loves symmetry when this light radiation could have dual nature why not material particles also have dual nature particle nature and wave nature so he predicted that particles must be particle waves based on concepts of planck and albert einstein thus de broglie very boldly suggested an assumption that like radiation matter also has dual nature particle nature and wave nature in those days there were no experimental tools to prove this so in 1924 louis de broglie in his doctoral thesis proposed that matter possesses dual nature particle properties and photon like wave properties as there was no evidence for such kind of matter waves at that time it was not accepted that paul langevin another scientist drew the attention now albert einstein to the matter waves as de broglie used einstein's formula e equal to mc squared einstein all the more became so interested and realized the importance of this concept that matter can have dual nature particle nature and wave nature he sought the attention of other eminent scientists at that time 3 years later in year 1927 de broglie idea was confirmed by davidson and germer experiment de broglie received nobel prize for his discovery of the wave nature of electrons in 1929 he was the first person to receive nobel prize on a phd thesis with this new discovery de broglie thus opened the gateway to the development of wave and quantum mechanics in the early 19th century now what is de broglie hypothesis a moving particle 
is associated with a wave known as the Broglie wave. The wavelength of matter wave is given by lambda equal to h by mv, which is equal to h by momentum. Wave m is the mass of the material particle, v is the velocity with which the particle is moving, and v is the momentum of the particle. So from this formula, we can make three inferences, waves and particles are the two modes in which the energy of the universe can exist. Next one, the universe is composed of matter and light radiation and nature loves symmetry as light radiation has dual nature, the material particles must also have dual nature. These are the three inferences D probably predicted. De Broglie wave equation. Now let us derive the expression. We know Planck's law E equal to h mu. We also know that velocity of light C equal to nu lambda. So from this, let us find out what is nu. Nu equal to C by lambda. So E becomes h C by lambda. Where C is the velocity of light in vacuum and lambda is the wavelength of the radiation. According to Einstein's mass energy relation, E equal to mc squared. So this is Planck's law, this is Einstein's expression. Therefore, energy of the particle can be derived by equating these two expressions, mc squared equal to hc by lambda. So lambda equal to hc by mc squared. Cc cancels, you are getting expression h by mc which is equal to h by p, where p equal to m into c is the momentum associated with a light particle called photon. Now for a material particle, the same expression can be written as lambda equal to h by mv. Here h by mc, a light photon travels with the velocity of light. A material particle travels with the velocity v. So lambda equal to h by mv, which is equal to h by p, where p is the momentum. Now various expressions for b probably wavelength. We know kinetic energy of the particle is given as half mv squared. Now multiply and divide by m, you are getting half m squared v squared by m. We know momentum is m into v. So m squared v squared becomes p squared. So you can write energy of the particle in terms of momentum. Energy equal to p squared by 2m. Therefore, p equal to square root of 2m into e. So momentum expression we have derived from this kinetic energy relation. So therefore, d probably wavelength becomes h by p. So h by p is square root of 2me, when e is the energy of the particle. This is the second expression for de Broglie wavelength. The third expression is that energy is equal to q into v, where q is charge of the electron or the charge of the particle and v is the electric potential. Therefore, lambda in the previous expression you replace E by QV. So E H by square root of 2M E. E is now replaced by QV. So this is the third expression for D probably wavelength. And in thermodynamics, we know this expression E equal to 3 by 2 KT, where K is called Boltzmann constant and T is absolute temperature in Kelvin. So now if you substitute in the previous formula E as 3 by 2 kT, you are getting another expression for lambda. Lambda equal to H by 2 M. In the place of E, you substitute here. So the formula becomes lambda equal to H by square root of 3 M kT, where K is Boltzmann constant given by 0.38 into 10 power minus 23 
joule per kelvin. So for formula, we have for the Broglie wavelength of matter waves. Now let us do some problems. If we solve problems, it tells that we have understood the concepts. From the problem, you take down the data properly so that you will know which formula to be chosen. Now the problem says, calculate the Broglie wavelength associated with an electron. Here no data is given, only electron value is given. So the formula, what you can take here is lambda equal to h by square root of 2m q v. H Planck's constant is equal to 6.625 into 10 power minus 34 joule second. And charge is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb. Now substitute for lambda, lambda equal to this much. So your formula becomes 12.26 by square root of V, where V is the electric potential. And A naught, that is Armstrong unit. Wavelength is measured in Armstrong unit. So for electron, you can straight away write the formula like this and derive, or else you can take lambda equal to 12.26 by square root of B. Suppose if V is 100 volts, substitute here 100, square root of 100 equal to 10. So 12.26 by 10 becomes 1.266 Armstrong unit or 1.266 into 10 power minus 10 meter. The next problem, calculate the wavelength of a 50 kg skier moving at 16 meter per second. That means heavy mass. So we know lambda equal to h by mv. Lambda is inversely proportional to mass of the particle. If mass is more, wavelength will become less. Now, take the formula lambda equal to h by mv. Now, substitute the data, h value, 50 kg and its velocity 60 meter per second. So, you are having 8.3 into 10 power minus 37 meter. In the previous problem, we found lambda was around 1.22 into 10 power minus 10 meter. 10 power minus 10 meter is so greater value when you compare with 10 power minus 37 meter. Okay, so what do you understand is if the mass of the particle is heavier, the wavelengths, though the particle is moving, it produces matter waves, but the wavelength of matter wave is 10 power minus 37 meter means it is too small that our eyes will not be able to observe them at all. The third problem is calculate the wavelength of an electron moving at 1 into 10 power 6 meters per second. Straight problem. Formula is lambda equal to h by mv. Just substitute you are getting. So previously we took 50 kg skya. Now you see electron. Look at the wavelength. Very, very, very big. Very, very high value compared to the previous problem. Okay. So with this, today's session gets over. I hope you would have understood what is called matter wave. And you have solved some problems to get clarity over the concept of matter waves. Thank you.